Well, hello and welcome back. I'm your instructor, Alex Oliveira. The last lesson you learned about email marketing, so important. We discover, we discussed in length why it could be the lowest cost per acquisition for you, for your business. In this lesson, we're going to talk about search engine marketing, search engine optimization, and paid search. Now, what's the difference between SEM and SEO? You often hear the comparison made or sometimes they're used in the same conversation, but maybe it's not clear to you. Again, the acronym SEM stands for Search Engine Marketing, the acronym SEO, Search Engine Optimization. And you usually hear more about SEO than you hear about SEM. All right, so SEO really focuses on the things that you're going to do on your website to rank your website higher on the search engines or the search engine results page, which is also known as a SERP. So what you do on there, the content, the metadata, the links that you link to other websites, all the different things that you're going to do on your website, that's going to result in hopefully higher visibility, and that is SEO, so the organic search. Not a paid ad, but a an organic search result. So if someone is looking for your product or service, they type into the Google search engine or Bing or DuckDuckGo, any of the search engines that exist out there, and then if, if you've optimized your website properly over time by creating more content, hopefully you're going to rank high for the keywords that you are after. Now, Search engine marketing is sort of the umbrella. Search engine marketing includes SEO, but also paid search. So it is uh, uh, both paid and organic search engine marketing. And it is definitely a, a blended strategy when you're doing SEM where You know, you're going to have a a digital marketer or a lead generation agency come to you and say, hey, you should just do paid ads on Bing, or which is also known as Microsoft ads, or they're going to tell you do on Google ads or Amazon advertising, Facebook ads. Those are all paid digital ads, right? But you're trying to, in those cases, get the customer right there on the spot. When we've talked about earlier on using Lead Gen 360, the system, that you need to know your objectives. So when you're using paid ads, you have different objectives like awareness, consideration, conversion, and so on. Great. So that's using paid ads. And there's lots of different objectives that you can use there um, to reach those customers. And those customers are in the moment, right? They, They have a high intent when they're searching for a keyword. It's more of an inbound lead as a, as opposed to an outbound. When you're creating content and doing SEO, yes, you're going to generate inbound leads, but it's going to take longer to reach those customers or leads, right? Because you're creating it organically and you're then just waiting for them to search it and hopefully find you on page one or position two, two or three. Obviously, the dream is to rank high for all the keywords that um, encompass your business, your products, your services, both the branded keywords and the unbranded keywords. So the question that we I often get is that, which should I go with? Should I do SEO first or should I do paid ads or should I do both? And it really depends on your budget and your, your business goals, right? So if you're, if you're telling me that your, your strategy for business growth is long term because you're okay with sales right now, you have a sales team, you guys have enough customers, you're able to get referrals, they, they're repeat customers, then I'm going to tell you focus on search engine optimization, SEO. Why? Because in that case, it gives you the time to create content and then dominate your market, your geographic market, and your target audience by creating content for them, right? And content comes in many different ways. We talked about it in two, two lessons ago. You've got everything from blog posts to web pages to social media posts to videos, podcasts, infographics, case studies, white papers. The list goes on and on and on. There's lots of different ways that you can create content. So I know that you're not going to be able to allocate the time or the budget to do all types of content for your SEO. So just start with your website itself, the web pages and the copy that's there. So for SEO, some of the most basic things are going to be 
figure out what topics you want to go after. And the first thing you're going to do is set up your Google ads account and get the keyword planner tool. So go to the keyword planner, type in the keywords that you think customers are searching for your products or services. You're going to come up with that long list of keywords. Another software that you could use, SEM Rush. Another one, Moz. And there's many others that we're going to list in the resources. But ultimately, the, the first step is to do keyword research. You may opt to do keyword search the good old fashioned way, just manually going on the search engines like Google and Bing and typing out the phrases for the keywords that you think your customers are searching for you. You could also talk to your customers and ask them flat out, how did you find us? What did you type in the search engine? And then once you type that in, you're going to see that the Google is going to tell you suggested keywords that um, that when people are looking for the same thing you're searching for. So take a close look at that. But if you want to do it the right way, using the Keyword Planner tool or using a software like SCM Rush is going to be the best way. That's going to give you a list of thousands of keywords. And then you download that Excel spreadsheet and eliminate the keywords that you know for a fact have nothing to do with your product or service. Once you've narrowed it down, which typically for most businesses, even if they only have a handful of products, you're going to end up with probably five to 600 keywords. And these are both the short tail keywords and long tail. Long tail is a longer phrase for the keyword, right? One of the examples that we give you here is if you were looking for uh, a tomato plant, that's just two words, right? So tomato plant is going to be much harder for you to rank for tomato plant. That means that there's going to be more people looking for just that keyword. So it's a higher cost for the keyword. If you go down to the next phrase, it would be when to plant tomatoes. Maybe that's a longer phrase. And if I go a little bit further for the real long tail keyword, you're going to be looking, as you see here in the diagram, why are my tomato plants turning yellow? As you can see from the number, there's 390 average monthly searches for the long tail keyword. And then the next one, 3,600. But if I just go for the broader keyword, there are 22,000 people looking for that. So you see on the graph here on the left is search volume. More people are looking for the short keyword. And, and then as far as conversion rate, you really want to pay attention to this. You see the bottom line here, it says conversion rate. The longer the keyword, that means it's more niche, more specific, the higher the intent of the user. This makes sense. Just think about yourself as a consumer. When you're really specific, honed in on a, on a uh, uh, keyword uh, search that you're doing, that means that you're down the funnel, you've done your research, you know exactly what you want. Now, there's going to be less volume, right, the longer the keyword. But the good news is typically with long tail keywords, because you're getting very specific, there is less competition because everyone all the companies are shooting for the short keyword like tomato plant right if i were a nursery and i was selling tomato plants I, everyone is going to list that and, and talk about that so but again going back to your number one thing for your seo number one thing is going to be do the keyword research number two thing is going to figure out what topics you're going to write about so start writing titles we're going to give you a tool that can create a bunch of different titles in one click of a button. It's really quite amazing. And then once you have those titles, either hire someone or write it yourself. Typically, these, these web pages or blog posts should be anywhere between 500 and 1,000 words. It's going to contain multiple the, the same keyword multiple times. And you want to make sure that you add a few links in there, linking internally to the website. That's your on-page SEO. And then you're also going to link external to other websites. That's your off-page SEO, which we're going to talk about in, in some of the other lessons and we'll show you here in the resources. Also, if you are a local business, then you want to make sure that you claim your Google business profile. It used to be called Google My Business, but the Google business profile allows you to put in all the information about your business that ties it back to the local uh, market. So when we're talking about there's, you know, SEO and there's local SEO, local SEO is a lot I wouldn't say it's easier to do, but it's less challenging and it really focuses on that uh, 25 mile radius, right? When people put in dentist near me or mechanic near me, those are, if you've claimed your Google 
uh, business profile, you're more likely to show up on those search results. So make sure you claim that. It's free at business.google.com. And there you'll put the name of the business, the address, the phone number, the URL. You can add posts. You can use the insights tools to see how many people are coming to the website, who's calling you, when they're calling you. There's just lots of different uh, features in the software that you can use. Make sure you claim that. Another tool that you should use that is offered by Google for free if you're doing SEM and SEO and paid search is Google Search Console. Google Search Console is a, an SEO tool that everyone in digital marketing is using, has always used, and they're always making the product better. But basically, it's the technical side of, of search engine optimization. It's going to tell you everything about your site map, who's searching, what are the top pages. And, and there's a sort of a, an overlap between some of the reporting features that you get in Google Analytics and Google Search Console. But the, the Google Search Console is a more technical product. It'll allow you to test and really understand why your website is ranking where it's ranking, right? And I mentioned to you before that you can use SEMrush, but SEMrush might be a much bigger piece of software to master. So Google Search Console, real simple to set up. You set up a free account and then you ask your web developer to add the code to the header of the website and then boom. And as far as Google um, Business Profile, also free, very simple to claim it. You'll probably get a little postcard in the mail then you'll put in the code there and then voila, you've claimed it. Also, another very important piece of SEO that I should have mentioned is reviews. We all know how important reviews are. And Google reviews lives in Google business profile. So if you want to answer to your reviews in real time and make sure that you're getting more reviews, you must have access to Google business profile. So make sure you get that. And again, that is going to help your SEO in a big way. But if you're using a content management system like uh, WordPress or Wix or Squared Space, you're going to notice that when you create the post, the copy, there's an area where you add, you're going to add the metadata and the meta tags and meta description. Meta is just basically telling you that it's the specifics of the structure for that page, right? It's on the back of the code, whether it's JavaScript or HTML. So, you're going to fill those in and you're, you can use a plugin like Yoast to walk you through each step so that you can get the best optimization for that page, right? But you also want to add tags. You want to add some hashtags. You want to make sure that you have a, a, an image that is tagged in it as well. You want to make sure that once the page is ready to be published, that that it renders properly the speed is going to matter on your website we're also going to give you a tool here that uh, google gives you for free called the uh, page load speed tool and you want to test all of these things because once that page goes live if you don't have this checklist that we're going to share with you as you can see here on the screen there's a whole checklist of different things that you're looking at if you can't check off all these boxes your page is not going to ever rank right your experiment and, and exercise is to create a page and then track the performance, the success of it. Over the next few months, you're going to notice that maybe you get one click a day, then go to 10, then 20. And if you're using Google Analytics, which you should be, or if you're using software like um, um, SEMrush, you're going to be able to track where those clicks are coming from. Is it direct traffic? Is it uh, referral traffic? Is it just uh, organic? Where is it coming from? You really want to know that. And then little by little, you can track to find out where your content, your copy for that particular post, web page post, where it ranks on, on is it page two, page one, what position is it? And then after you've done that exercise, now you can go on and create a whole calendar, right? a whole planner for you to create as many posts as you can. And if you ask me what, how many pages should you have on a website? Thousands. It should be bare minimum thousands. But I understand if you're starting out with 20, you first got to get to 100, then 500, then 1,000. But it's think of creating content for your SEO, which the SEO will generate leads for you down the road without you spending any money. You're, again, remember we talked about the long-term play. SEO is more long-term play. 
um, you can expect that it'll take 12 to 18 months for you to rank relatively well for competitive keywords in, in just about any industry, right? So think 12 to 18 months, I'm creating pages and pages and pages, but once it starts to rank and you start to generate leads and phone calls and increase, that's it. You've done all the work. It's an investment. So think of it like building blocks. You are creating inventory, inventory of your copy, your content that you are educating, you're entertaining your users. And eventually that content, that inventory that you build will then start to yield results for you. And that those results should definitely turn into leads and leads into sales. And that's when SEO gets really exciting because then you know all the work that you've put in is now giving you profit, which is what you want after all, right? All right. So that's SEO. Now, when it comes to the other side of SEM, search engine marketing, which is the paid ads, we have just hundreds of options for you, right? You have your Googles, your Bings, your Amazons, your Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, the list goes on. We're not going to show you a tutorial in each one of the platforms here because we could, we could write a thousand courses just on this particular part of the course. The first thing that you have to figure out with your customers, your leads, is where are they hanging out? Is it LinkedIn, maybe because you're B2B, or is it Facebook because you are B2C? And and again, don't make any any uh, judgments on that because I've seen plenty of examples where um, a company has come to me and said, well, I want to build my brand. I, I have a budget to do paid ads, right? Digital advertising. Um, but I don't think I'm going to be on Instagram because I think that's just females and younger. You never know. You never know. So... Don't make any big judgments, but just talk to your customers and ask them where they hang out. And, and then once you know that, then you can get on the platform and you can do an assessment for the audience. You'll see that back on lesson four for audience, lesson four for audience, which was part of the Lead Gen 360 system. We gave you the tutorial and the exercises for you to learn how to look for opportunities. Opportunities using the Facebook audience tool, LinkedIn advertising, Google ads, and using the keyword planner. So we've already set you up and you've already done this exercise. And this exercise is going to tell you how much would it cost you to acquire new customers on any of those platforms doing digital ads or paid ads. Absolutely. Paid ads should be a part of your lead generation and digital marketing stack. It just depends on where you want to start, if you're ready, if you have the content, if you have built that customer journey. Because think about it. If you're ready to run ads, digital ads, someone sees your ad, whether it's a search or a display. Display ads is where it actually has the picture of whatever product or service you're trying to advertise. This is great. When it display ads, really great for awareness, top of the funnel. But if you're looking for leads, then you should be focused more on search ads, right? Text ads. Um, video ads are great on YouTube, but they are also pretty much mostly good for awareness, right? If you want leads, it's search ads in the moment. Okay. And, and so if you're doing those search, search ads, you've, you've got to be thinking, all right, how much is it going to cost me to generate 100 clicks? And it, are those 100 clicks going to produce five leads, 10 leads? These are questions that you're going to have to ask uh, um, a representative with one of the platforms or a digital marketer who can do that research for you. Now, typically, you'll be able to find reports that give you a benchmark on what you can expect a cost per click. If you're in insurance or in legal or medical, right? There is a cost per keyword that you can expect. And then you'll know that there's a conversion percentage average that then you can do the math and say, okay, I know that if I'm a dentist, it's going to cost me $50 per lead for every new appointment right? This Again, simple math that you're doing here, but you're going to do it with the help of a Google representative or Facebook or Amazon. They're happy to tell you to spend more, but really what you want to do in this exercise is just to set up the accounts, choose one for the paid ads, just choose one, and then go ahead and, and, and uh, run a campaign and measure the results. 
Again, the results for paid ads in SEM is going to be immediate, right? Someone sees your ad, they click on it, you get charged. Whether they go to your website and call you or not, you don't know yet. Again, it's part of the experimentation. The, the other side is the SEO. The other side of SEM is SEO, search engine optimization. That is long-term. You're creating content and optimizing. And there's a learning curve there. Absolutely. It takes time and you have to be consistent. So SEM, search engine marketing, which remember includes both SEO and paid ads. SEM is absolutely should be a part. It should absolutely be a part of your lead generation strategy and campaign, both in the short term and in the long term. So we'll be back here with the next lesson for you. Mm -hmm.